So there were 53 competitors in a downhill skiing event, and their times and seconds are shown below. Complete parts A through D. Okay, the mean time was 103.74 seconds with a standard deviation of 3.74. Now, they didn't have to give us that. We could have gone ahead and opened this up in StatCrotch and, and done a quick summary stat, but they did. So the normal, if the normal model is appropriate, what percent of times will be less than 107.48? So I'm going to flip over to the applet and just put this in. So I'm put in the mean, 103.74, standard deviation of 3.74, and we're wanting to do just the standard, less than, less than, it was 107.48, if I wrote that down correctly. Always look at it and make sure it sort of makes sense when you put it in, less than, it shaded the less when the, this value here is certainly greater than the mean, it is, so it's more than 50%, so 0 0.841 to the nearest integer, so it's 84%. What is the actual percent of times less than 107.48? So, you know, our model says it should be about 84. Now, it's about 84. Now, if we look at the actual data, how many are actually less than 107.48? Okay, thankfully they put these in order. If they didn't, we could open up a stack crunch and sort it. You would not want to sort that by hand. So we're going down through here. And so how many are less than a 107? So we only have it easier, you have 53, to count how many are greater than, right? One, two, three, four are greater than. So 49 of these are less than that. Does that make sense? Because there are 53 total. So 49 over 53. So when I do that, I get 92 point, once one decimal place, I just went ahead and push it all the way out, so 92.5%. So I do need to pull this up into StatCrunch. It said to assume a normal model, and I was a little suspicious about that. So let's go ahead and open in StatCrunch, and let's, let's just look and see what the data looks like if I've run a histogram, a dot plot, and a normal probability plot, which is what we learned in this chapter, either from the chapter reading or from the video. Okay, so let's just start off with a simple histogram. Hmm, that does not look completely normal, does it? So let's look at a QQ plot, which is the same thing as the normal probability plot pretty much. It just sort of rotates it. Okay, so what does this tell me? So what we want to happen, if it's going to be, if, if we can assume a normal, if we want our plot, our line to, our dots to be about on this line without systematic departures from linearity. We have a big systematic departure. It's not even close right here, right? I mean, it, it's obviously not going here. We have these one, two, three, four values up here that really mess this thing up. So that is why um, we, um, our, our, our model does not really accurately capture this as well as we would think it would have. We would expect it, you know, between, you know, 80 and 90% probably. So no, because the normal probability plot shows is not appropriate. So A. So make a histogram. Now we already did this, and ours looked most like C, as I recall. Let's pull that back up. Yeah. You know, if you ever need to change any of these options, I generally don't have to, but you can change the bin width and the starting point. Um, you know, our bin width here. It actually looks appropriate, right? It's about two and a half. But if you wanted to change that to something else, you want to make it four, you'll get a slightly different graph. And actually, there's a smaller. So let's make it two. Where you've got, you know, thinner bins, more bins. So, C.
and I'm going to answer that without at the end of my video on. So we can see from this data here, it's um, kind of skewed right. It's kind of a, a wonky data set here. Uh, roughly skewed right. Definitely not normal though, right? You know, if we if it were more like B, that's rather normal and symmetric. That would be nice. Um, D is sort of skewed to the left, and C is sort of skewed to the right. So hope that helps.